Good afternoon. This is All India Radio and I'm Anuja Kumar with the Midday News. The headlines. National Investigation Agency busts IS inspired terror module conduct searches at 16 locations in Delhi and Uttar Pradesh five persons arrested in Jammu and Kashmir security forces bust a terrorist hideout near the native village of Hezbollah commander Riaz Naiko in Pulwama district unique identification authority of India asserts that schools cannot make aadhar number a precondition for admission fog and cold wave disrupt normal life across north india in premier badminton league delhi dashers to clash with north eastern warriors at hyderabad this evening and india were 215 for 2 at stumps against australia on the opening day of the third test at melbourne NIA has busted a new Islamic state inspired module based in Delhi and UP which was allegedly in an advanced stage of preparing for attacks in the country according to NIA sources the module called Harkat ul Harb e Islam had even amassed weapons and explosives NIA sleuths who had been tracking the module along with the central intelligence agencies for some time are currently raiding 16 locations spread across Delhi Amroha Ghaziabad and Lucknow There are at least 6 to 7 locations in Delhi itself mostly in Silampur in the raids conducted till now five persons have been arrested from Uttar Pradesh NIA sources said many active members of the IS inspired module are identified and are likely to be arrested by this evening according to the NIA sources the members of the module were in touch with each other Their questioning is expected to lead them to their handlers and mentors and reveal their exact plans for carrying out attacks a report from a correspondent Clues of NIA in a joint operation with UP ATF conducted raids at Mohalla Shahi Chabutra, Jama Masjid and Islam Nagar in city area of Amroha district. Teams later raided at Saipur Ema village in Nogawa Sadat Tehsil and detained three brothers for interrogation. Another NIA team conducted raids at Baksar Mosque in Hapur district. Imam of the mosque, Maulana Shakib, a resident of Simhauli area of the district, was detained for interrogation. Sources in NIA said that search is still going on. and some more arrests are expected soon sushil chandra tiwari air news lucknow in kashmir valley security forces busted a terrorist hideout near the native village of hisbul commander riaz naiko in forest area in avantipura of pulwama district police sources said the area was cordoned off early morning and there was no contact with terrorists till filing of this report and the operation was on The Unique Identification Authority of India UIDAI has asserted that schools cannot make the 12 digit biometric identifier a precondition for student admission. UIDAI Chief Executive Officer Ajay Bhushan Pandey said in New Delhi yesterday that asking for Aadhaar cards for admissions is not as per the provisions of law and doing so will be against the recent order of the Supreme Court. He said UIDAI is aware of the reports that some schools are asking for aadhar cards for student admission UIDAI has asked schools to ensure that no child is denied admission for lack of aadhar The Lok Sabha is scheduled to take up the Muslim Women Protection of Rights on Marriage Bill 2018 tomorrow Law Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad will move the bill to protect the rights of married Muslim women and to prohibit divorce by pronouncing talaq by their husbands. The bill makes all declarations of instant triple talaq void and illegal. It seeks to make the practice a punishable offence with imprisonment of up to 3 years. The bill will replace the Muslim Women Protection of Rights on Marriage Ordinance 2018. BJP leader Vijay Goyal said the party has issued a three-line whip asking all its MPs to be present in the Lok Sabha. 
महिलाओं के सशक्तिकरण के लिए और विशेष रूप से मुस्लिम महिलाओं को समानता का अधिकार दिलाने के लिए और उनके साथ अन्याय न हो मोदी सरकार वचनबद्ध है इसीलिए जब यह बिल 2017 के अंदर राज्यसभा में पारित नहीं हो पाया तो कैबिनेट ने इसके ऊपर ऑर्डिनेंस जारी किया है अब वो ऑर्डिनेंस जो है वो बिल के स्वरूप में लोकसभा में आएगा और इसीलिए लोकसभा में भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने विप जारी किया है ताकि मुस्लिम महिलाओं के साथ जो अन्याय हो रहा था जो व्हाट्सएप पे ई पे टेलीफोन पे लिख कर तीन बार तलाक 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 कह देते थे वो अन्याय उनके साथ समाप्त हो Banking services in the public sector banks were affected today due to a strike by unions against the proposed merger of Vijaya Bank and Dena Bank with Bank of Baroda. The strike has been called by the United Forum of Bank Unions (UFBU), an umbrella organization of all nine unions, including the All India Bank Officers Confederation, the All India Bank Employees Association, among others. However, branches of new generation private sector banks remain unaffected by the strike. This is the second bank strike in less than a week. Last Friday, an officers union of state-run banks observed a day-long strike to protest against the merger. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. Fog and cold wave are disrupting normal life across North India. Delhi recorded the coldest temperature of the season this morning with the mercury dipping to 3.8 degrees Celsius, four notches below the season's average. Talking to AIR, scientist in the Met department, Charan Singh said that intense cold wave is expected to continue in north, west and parts of the country for the next couple of days. जहाँ तक कोहरे की बात है तो सुबह सुबह का अर्ली मॉर्निंग का कोहरा कुछ एरियाओं में रहेगा खासतौर से पंजाब हरियाणा और राजस्थान में बाकी दिन में ज्यादातर एरियाओं में धूप खिली रहेगी और इसी के साथ साथ पहाड़ों की भी अगर हम बात करें नॉर्थ वेस्ट इंडिया में तो कोई ऐसा इंटेंस वेस्टर्न डिस्टर्बेंस नहीं है जिससे कोई बर्फबारी की उम्मीद हो तो कुल मिला अगले चार ऐसी पांच दिन मौसम आमतौर पर दिन में साफ रहेगा Entire Uttar Pradesh is in the grip of intense cold wave. Our correspondent reports that intense cold and dense fog badly affected smooth vehicular traffic. The cold wave sweeping Himachal Pradesh has further intensified with minimum temperature dropping by a few notches in most parts of the state. The meteorological department today said the lowest temperature has been recorded in the tribal district of Lahore and Spiti's administrative center, Keelong, at minus 11.1 degrees Celsius. The minimum temperature in Kalpa has been recorded at minus 4 degrees Celsius and Manali at minus 3.4 degrees Celsius. In Punjab and Haryana cold wave continues unabated today the thick blanket of fog has affected the road and rail traffic adversely due to low visibility a report blanket of fog and gulf several parts of Punjab and Haryana in the morning affecting road and rail traffic in the area according to an officer at Ambala railway junction in Haryana the trains are running late where till 11:30 there was a low visibility people are suffering due to cancellation of Unchahar express and Janseva express an officer told Archana express is running 14 hours late whereas Havda mail is 5 hours late than its normal time Ashwini Kumar Sharma AIR news Chandigarh In Jammu and Kashmir mercury stayed several degrees below the freezing point resulting in frozen water bodies and water supply lines in several residential areas a met official said leh town in ladakh region recorded the lowest temperature at minus 17.1 celsius last night kargil recorded a low of minus 14.4 celsius srinagar at minus 6.7 The ski resort of Gulmarg in North Kashmir was the coldest place in the valley at minus 9.4 degrees Celsius. The weatherman has predicted rain or snowfall at isolated places in the valley and Ladakh region today. International golfer Jyoti Randhawa has been arrested on charges of poaching by the Uttar Pradesh Forest Department in Motipur range of Katarnia Ghat in Bahraich district. Interrogation and further legal action is being carried out by the DFO Katarnia Ghat and his team. Station officer of Motipur told AIR that Jyotinder Singh Randhawa, alias Jyoti Singh Randhawa, and his friend Mahesh Virajdar were in the area from last few days, and team of forest department was keeping an eye over their activities. A vehicle, weapon, and other equipment, along with wildlife articles, have been seized from them. 
Atal Ayushman Uttarakhand Yojana has been launched in the Hill State. Under the scheme, each household in the state will be able to avail medical treatment of up to 5 lakh rupees annually. The scheme will benefit 23 lakh households and cover 1,350 critical diseases. Launching the scheme in Dehradun yesterday, Chief Minister Trivendra Singh Rawat distributed scheme-related golden cards to the beneficiaries. He also signed memoranda of understanding with private hospitals and announced that soon free of cost OPD facilities will be available for children and elderly people in the state. The Photo Division of Ministry of Information and Broadcasting is organizing the 7th National Photography Awards. Entries for all the awards have been invited from across the country. The photographers will be awarded in mainly three categories. Lifetime Achievement Award, Awards for Professional Photographers and the Awards for the Amateur Photographers. The Award for Professional Photographer has two categories, Professional Photographer of the Year Award with cash prize of 1 lakh rupees and Special Mention Awards with cash prize of 50,000 rupees. The Lifetime Achievement Award carries a cash prize of 3 lakh rupees. The entries can be sent to the Photo Division by 31st of this month. Those interested can visit the division's website www.photodivision.gov.in for further details. In Libya, at least three people, including a senior civil servant, were killed when suicide attackers stormed the Foreign Ministry office in the state capital, Tripoli. Special Forces spokesperson Tarak al Darwaz said 21 people were injured when a car bomb exploded near the ministry last night, prompting security forces to rush to the scene. Darwaz said a suicide bomber blew himself up on the second floor of the building, while a second attacker died when a suitcase he was carrying exploded. He said a third assailant was killed by security forces outside the building. Foreign Minister Tahar Siala said one of the dead was senior diplomat Ibrahim al Shaibi, who headed a department in his ministry. The Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the attack. Indonesian authorities have issued a fresh warning asking people to avoid the coast in areas where a tsunami killed more than 420 people last weekend. Indonesia's Meteorology, Geophysics and Climatology Agency asked people yesterday to stay at least 500 meters and up to 1 kilometer from the coastline along the strait which lies between the two main islands. Agency head Dwikoreta Karnavati said government workers were monitoring Anak Krakatoa's eruptions and high waves and heavy rain were possible today. She said at a news conference, all these conditions could potentially cause landslides at the cliffs of the crater into the sea, and they fear that could trigger a tsunami. She asked the communities to remain vigilant, but not to panic. Here is a desk report. According to Indonesia's Disaster Mitigation Agency, death toll in the tsunami stands at 429, with more than 1,400 people injured and at least 128 missing. The big waves that followed the eruption of Anak Krakatoa, or Child of Krakatoa Island Volcano, hit communities along the Sunda Strait on Saturday night. The eruption is believed to have set off a landslide on the volcano, displacing the water that slammed into Java and Sumatra Islands. Residents of Sumur village, which has been slow to receive aid due to roads being cut off, remained stunned by how quickly the tsunami hit. Tripti Srivastav, News Desk. On to sports. Electing to bat, India ended day one of the third test against Australia at 215 for two at Melbourne, Australia. The visitors lost early wickets with openers Hanuma Vihari at the poultry score of eight and debutant Mayank Agarwal on 76. Skipper Virat Kohli was on the crease, scoring 47, and Chiteshwar Pujara hitting the half century at 68. They stretched an unbeaten 92-run stand for the third wicket. In Premier Badminton League today, Delhi Dashers will face Northeastern Warriors at Hyderabad at 7 p.m. Last evening, Hyderabad Hunters recorded their second consecutive win of the tournament, defeating Chennai Smashers 4-1 at Hyderabad. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. National Investigation Agency busts IS-inspired terror module, conducts searches at 16 locations in Delhi and Uttar Pradesh. Five persons arrested. In Jammu and Kashmir, security forces bust a terrorist hideout near the native village of Hezbollah commander Riaz Naiko in Pulwama district. Unique Identification Authority of India asserts that schools cannot make Aadhaar number a precondition for admission. 
fog and cold wave disrupt normal life across North India. In Premier Badminton League, Delhi dashes to clash with North Eastern Warriors at Hyderabad this evening and India were 215 for two at stumps against Australia on the opening day of the third test at Melbourne. And with that, we end the midday news.